city without crime to get started. For anyone that hasn't seen the phenomenon that happens right around this time, I think Greta's the one who discovered it. Um, if you stand right here and you look at the clock, it does not look like the clock at all. It's a complete projection of the stained glass window. And it actually looks like a stained glass window. It has to be a sunny day. So if anybody wants to run up before we start, and see that, it's awesome. I never had seen it before. And then someone pointed it out to me. So uh, we're going to do the greetings and announcements first. I'm Pastor Nancy Brody, and I want to give some updates on the prayer list. Again, I'll remind you that, are we on? Okay. Again, I'll remind you that um, if you have entered someone's name for the prayer list, if you could call me or email me with an update and let me know if they should be continued on the prayer list and also how they're doing, that would be helpful. Um, Vivian Kesey is Audrey Rummel's uh, relative. I asked that you would pray for her. She had a stroke and she was doing well and now she's sort of heading in the other direction. So please uh, space, say a special prayer for her. Larry Lahr Jr. is also um, in the hospital. And many of you might know he has a heart pump and he's a young man who's had a number of serious illnesses and actually uh, we almost died once and um, anyway, he's having a lot of health issues. If you could say an extra prayer for him as well. We also have another loss to add to the families that are mourning, and that's the family of David Shostal, a local community uh, gentleman that I was informed of. Again, uh, thank you for your cards and prayers regarding my father's passing. I appreciated them very much. Everything went well. And do I have any, are there any announcements from you all? Darla? Just, uh, I'd like to let everyone know the Easter flower sign up sheet is on the front of you if anyone is interested in purchasing a flower for Easter. Um, the Lady Day meeting is this Wednesday at 6 30. And um, we are doing that Easter event that uh, drive through for the kiddos in the area. If anyone would like to make a donation or maybe I'm going to repeat what you said just in case people couldn't hear. So we have the Easter flower sign-up sheet here, and um, it's also available online, or you could email um, Darla, who's been organizing that. We have a ladies' aid meeting this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Again, if you can't attend in person, we do socially distance in the um, basement and wear our masks. But if you have any concerns, you could also contact the church or Darla who's our president. And then uh, we are doing an Easter drive through event for children in the area. And so far, I mean, I wish I was a kid because this goodie bag that the Ladies Aid is putting together is pretty cool. And it seems to be getting, uh, the word seems to be getting out. So now we have hundreds of eggs that are ready to be filled and need fill, <laughs> need filling. So if you could please donate um, small candy that's individually wrapped to put in those eggs, that would be excellent. And that will be on March 27th, right? That's a Saturday. Okay. Ross? We're going to start up the um, kids' Sunday school starting in March again, the second and fourth Sunday. Okay, excellent. So the children's church slash Sunday school that happens after children's sermon during the church service of the second and fourth Sundays of the month will reconvene in March. The other thing I'd like to invite you all to is our outdoor joint service next Sunday. It will be at 10 a.m. at St. Peter's Pavilion. We're gonna burn that firewood that we had for since Christmas Eve. And there'll be um, hot chocolate and coffee and pre-bagged cookies. I'm not sure, do we need more donations of cookies to your knowledge, darling? No, I Okay. We have a good variety. Okay. 
and the compromands are going to help us out by doing the reading and um, handing out, you know, working with refreshments. We're going to have special music by Sally Ann Barner Bechtel. She's going to do two songs, and we're going to be able to sing through our masks for a change. That would be awfully nice. So please consider coming at 10 a.m. next Sunday for our joint outdoor worship. All right, let's prepare our hearts. Oh, uh, look, look. Diana? I to make two birthday announcements. Carl Schneider has a birthday on Thursday. No, last Tuesday. Tuesday. Last week. And Dave Reed has one on Thursday. All right, happy birthday, Carl. And Dave. And my apologies when I miss your birthday. I, it's not because I don't love you. I just lose track of time. Okay, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. See, I have to tell Greta what I mean to do, and then she reminds me when I don't do it. Um, so before service begins, we're going to have our presentation we look forward to introduce Kyle Hoffman. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to give you this time. We need you. All right. Um, so this morning, Messiah is pleased to recognize two very special members and. Uh, that have been added to the memorial plaque for distinguished service. Uh, Greta Wright and Bill Campbell, um, with Cindy Stauffer and Greta Montsanti. We are very blessed to have Greta as an active member of Messiah. Greta is the music director for Messiah in St. Peter and teaches the children's choir, adult choir, bell choir, and handles all the church services. She plays the music for special services such as weddings and funerals. Until recently, Greta was the church secretary and was in charge of the newsletter for both churches. Greta has served on numerous committees for Messiah, helps with special events, and is instrumental as the leader of Bible school program each year. And for Bill, although Bill is no longer with us, it is a pleasure to acknowledge and recognize all he did for Messiah during the time he was a member. He was an excellent Sunday school teacher and taught many thought-provoking lessons. He often referenced the teachings of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German Lutheran pastor and theologian. Bill was a member of the adult choir, served on many church committees, and he and his wife Pat represented Messiah at many of the synod conferences. Bill enjoyed the young members of the church and complimented them on their music and leadership talents. Bill was a respected and admired, admired member of Messiah. He had a strong faith and was willing to share. Thank you both. Um, we're going to do something different this year, and um, if anyone wants to step up and say a few words about either Bill or Greta at this time, they're more than welcome to do so. And I would encourage you to do so because I haven't been here and I didn't even realize, for instance, that Greta was helping out in the preschool years ago until I saw her picture in the directory with the preschool. And of course, I never met Bill. So um, if anybody would please maybe tell one story about either or both of them, I would, I would appreciate it. I'm sure people listening would. Dave, you give me the microphone. You can tell a story about both. I know you could. I actually came up to tell a story about Bill. <laughs> I'm not kidding. My first year out of college, I was teaching as a long-term sub at Millersburg High School, and Charlie Funk seemed to pass away. And I was upset because I couldn't come to the funeral because I had gotten out of home a little bit. And Bill Campbell showed up unannounced at my classroom door in Millersburg High School and said, get out of here, go to the service, which was in Millersburg at the funeral home. And uh, I did. And I, I came back, and my kids were sad to see me arrive <laughs> because they wanted Mr. Campbell to stay. Uh, it was uh, something that he worked out with the principal of the building without me knowing. 
and it was it was really special. And uh, Bill also uh, initiated our, our parish newsletter and taught me how to do that. And uh, that lasted for a short time because I couldn't hold a candle to the work he was doing. But Bill is someone who I consider myself uh, privileged to have met, and he uh, still to this day uh, has had an impact on my day to day life. And I'm truly appreciative of the impact that he's had on me personally and on this church that will last a long, long time. And also, I love Greta very much. <laughs> First of all, thank you to Greta for taking me to Brad draft. It's wonderful. For Bill, um, I'm sorry, I just broke it off for Bill, too. Um, Bill was a fantastic uh, <coughs> Sunday school teacher. And being in charge of the Sunday school programs, I had to get Bill to teach sometimes when he was reluctant and didn't want to. Uh, and what I would do, though, since I would go to his house with a cup and a cream pie, I took a custard pie, and it would work every time. But, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for those years of teaching. He and, he and Pat opened up their home too as well for us when we did one for our movie nights, which is a really cool experience. We continue to do it now in our church as well. But Bill, as everyone else has said here, when Bill taught, everybody wanted to be there because it was such an incredible experience to hear him teach. Uh, and again, for Greta, again, thank you, thank you for the wonderful job. Thank you. When Pastor Nancy uh, called me to tell me about this tribute to my dad, um, I said, seriously? And she said, yeah, people really loved your dad. And just a little life lesson, the many Sundays I came to church with my parents, um, I would sit mortified over the fact that my dad would stand while everyone else was sitting and just avail himself of everyone in the congregation and go around and talk to them and order them to do certain things and so what I learned from that is that it's okay if my kids are embarrassed by me. <laughs> Thank you Cindy. Uh, anyone else? Harvey? Of course we're very good friend of Bill Campbell. I loved his amazing, incredible bass voice, which would probably vibrate the windows. <laughs> but um, I want to say something about my daughter. Uh, I probably would have quit singing a long, long time ago in the choir. I had not become a choir director. I want you to know that. And, uh, I don't know if I'd do it again, but I found a way right here. <laughs> she could move the choir, she could move the songs along. I love the singing when she directed. Okay, and I love Ben Campbell. I love them to this day. And you too, Greta. <laughs> Campbell, of course, was in choir, and Christmas Day uh, fell on a Sunday, and we said, well, will anybody be here to sing? And Bill said, well, where else would it be? And I thought, well, that's true, we should be at church on Christmas Day. <laughs> so uh, he, was, he was just a, a wonderful person, and I love being in the choir with him, too. And uh, I just want to say the same thing that Jan said about Brenda. Thank you so much for doing all this. I know it's taken a lot of time and effort, and I certainly appreciate all of you being with this church. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Anyone else? Hi, everybody. My name's Carrie, and I grew up in this parish. Um, 
staff of secretary for some time, and I will always be grateful to them for making church um, such a big part of my life. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody for bringing to life uh, some of the things that my father did. It's, I kind of had the same reaction my sister did when I heard that, uh, that we were doing this, but um, I just appreciate being reminded of the kind of person that he was. And I just want to thank everybody. And I remember Greta when she was a baby. <laughs> and it's just impressive to hear of all of her accomplishments. So I just wanted to thank everybody. I don't like speaking, but um, so he used to sit behind Phil and Pat, and when the offering came up, he'd say, Get off your money, honey. <laughs> Every single player was there. Nobody's here to say that. And um, he obviously, obviously, what hymn did I choose for today? He did well with my soul, and I promise you, if everybody was singing, I would have had you open up your Sunday school hymns, uh, hymnals because it's a little bit longer version, and that was his favorite. Um, he, that was well known to us, that was his favorite thing because of all the loss that the author went through, and he still wrote this, like, praising God through the loss um, of family members. for sharing that really did help paint and broaden the picture that I have for both of the people that we were honoring today. So thank you for sharing. Now we will prepare our hearts and minds for worship. are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, for it says that we are in bondage to sin and cannot be ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and 
given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of christ and by his authority i therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here and online their worship and praise let us pray to the lord lord have mercy help save comfort and defend us gracious lord amen glory to god in the highest and peace to his people on earth lord, lord god, god, have mercy. Amen. 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 father we worship you and give you thanks we pray to you lord Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of God, Lord God, and of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, and receive the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Son of Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God and Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may not have any power over us, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading comes from Genesis 9, 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, 
As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the, dark, out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, and never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow on a bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I established between me and all flesh that is in this earth. Please join me in reciting parts of Psalm 25 responsibly. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their sweets. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for you have been trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides, he guides the humble in doing right, and, and teaches his way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O oh Lord, for your name is sin, for it is great. Second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of, of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends the second reading. So we have a, a different uh, verse to introduce the gospel reading. Down on page 63, it begins with ferment, begins with return to the Lord. A return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. 
and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of our Lord. I'd like to invite the children forward.
Several big ideas run through all of today's readings. I'm going to name them first and then tie them together. The most obvious one is using water to cleanse. Water is used to literally wash away evil and create a clean slate. The second idea is that God values flesh. God values created beings composed of bone, muscle, and blood. And these creatures represent that which God wishes to redeem. The third idea is this, that God decides never again to expect any kind of positive results from people without first making a personal appeal to them as individuals. Finally, death is proven to not ever be a kind of ultimate solution. In Genesis, we hear that at first, all flesh is cut off by water. In this story, the water that we know as life-giving drowns all flesh. As the people in Texas have had to experience and know the deprivation of water, we too have experienced thirst because our flesh, that is our bones, muscles, organs, and blood, are made of at least 60% water. Water can keep us alive. But when God sees nothing good in flesh, he sends water down from the clouds. The level of water rose until nearly every living creature drowned. In the book of Psalms, we often hear of a similar selective punishment. The psalmist says, don't let us be put to shame. Punish those people that are treacherous. Don't look at me, God. Look at them. The psalms encourage honest expression that almost always includes an admission of sin, a personal and collective need for mercy, forgiveness, and instruction. As I've been trying to encourage you, if you want to learn how to pray aloud, read the psalms. They include a verbal recall of what God has demonstrated repeatedly with the hope and reminder that if we'll remember, We'll trust God once more. Then we hear in the New Testament, the writer says these words, that Christ was put to death in the flesh. The word for flesh used in 1 Peter is the very same word used in Genesis 9. When that dawned on me, it gave me chills that Christ became the very substance which describes every life that drowned during the great flood. God chose to become that flesh. And since as I was talking with the children, Christ has existed in God in eternal time with no beginning or end, that means Christ experienced what has happened to all flesh. Never can we say that God is removed from suffering or life and death in the flesh. The earth and everything in it, all created beings of bone, muscle, and blood, represent God and that which God values and wishes to redeem. So we cannot forget that our current lives and our eternal lives are tied to flesh and water. As we are reminded of our baptism that we, like Christ, are put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit, we remember that during baptism, the combination of water and God's word acted upon our flesh under the power and authority of God's Holy Spirit. Our flesh was once again cleansed and redeemed. Was there baptism in the Old Testament? Not as we know it but water was symbolically and ritually used to cleanse and purify. And it probably worked in the moment. But the trouble is that, as we know, 
The effect of outward washing is only temporary. I mean, the difference between looking clean and being clean is what sells all those cans of Lysol, right? Because only when cleanliness is tied to life and death does what you use to clean matter. We need something to rid us of what is unseen and deadly. Something that can, in effect, change the interior landscape, not just improve the outward appearance. You see, baptismal water permanently changes the makeup of our very selves. Without it, human efforts only temporarily plump and hydrate like a good lotion. Human attempts at self-improvement cannot change our basic composition. We're stuck and headed toward drowning without hope if we don't attach ourselves to the death of Christ. That death makes us alive in the spirit. I found it interesting that in Genesis there was no appeal made to people who were lost in sin. Noah doesn't preach. He built an ark while talking to God and everyone watching the process for decades is simply destroyed tragically. But as a result, God made a vow to never again expect results from people without appealing to individuals directly. Ever since the Great Flood, God has approached and tried to communicate with each and every living creature. And the more you are willing to share your story, or give a testimony like you did today, or listen to other people tell their story, the more you'll see evidence of God working in people's lives. When a group decides to engrave a person's name on a little plate of brass and attach it to a plaque, that's a testimony. That name attests to the way that God personally appealed to an individual and how that individual was able to respond to God's call in their lives time and time again. A name represents a person, their presence and participation in the flesh. Each of you deserves to be recognized for not only giving your time and energy to this church congregation, but for allowing yourselves to be shaped by it. And being recognized does not mean we are perfect. You see, once Noah's family got off the ark, they were still flawed. They still did stuff that invited trouble, and they still struggled to be in healthy relationships. They had been saved, but they had not been brought to God in the same way as Christ brought you to God. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring each of you to God. Now when people don't obey God's way, God waits patiently. That's part of all of our stories. God realizes that the human conscience functions poorly. Although God's Son was put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit, even his death was not the ultimate solution to evil. The solution to evil came only through new life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Like love conquers hate, life conquers death. See, in Noah's time, God wanted people to act a certain way, but he chose to only relate to a few humans he wanted to deal with. And that's quite the contrast to the portrait of God and Jesus coming to earth in the flesh, being baptized by another human being in the flesh, and saying the kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God has come near in the flesh, in this church. I wonder why it's so hard to repent and believe the good news. Could it be because our perception of God really hasn't changed? Let's look at the gospel. 
They try so hard to convince us that Jesus of Nazareth was God in the flesh, his son. As human beings, how can we not get that connection? The kids get it. Jesus is the chosen one with whom God is well pleased. The Spirit descended upon him and then led him into the wilderness where he was tempted, tried by Satan, and passed the test. And who was there with him? Wild beasts. And angels kept him company and ministered to him. So the flesh of living creatures, as well as spirited beings, were both there for Jesus in the wilderness as they are for us. What God created with bones, muscles, and blood was fully redeemed and called to the purpose of ministry. Then Jesus demonstrates what happens when life takes a sad turn, like when John the Baptist got arrested, or when we lose people we love. Jesus understands that sad turns can be appropriate moments to proclaim the good news, remembering that the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. That's an awfully short message. What was the good news in there? Did I miss it? I think the good news is this, that the time has and is fulfilled. There is this unbreakable covenant between God and you and your descendants after you. I mean, how many of us worry about our adult children who don't come to church or our spouses or other family members? We need to be reminded that God's covenant extends into the generations. And with every living creature on earth. Never again shall all flesh be cut off. More good news was found in the song. We find out that that covenant is unbreakable only because God remembers the flesh according to his steadfast love and for the sake of his goodness. So while we confess about what we've done and failed to do, God remembers us according to his steadfast love and his goodness. God always knew that death would never prove to be the ultimate solution when things went wrong. What God always intended was to share his steadfast love and goodness so everything would thrive and live in harmony. But when evil and death found ways to express themselves and cause suffering in the flesh, God used the flesh as a medium through which all things could be accomplished. See, flesh is necessary to experience death and rebirth, sin and forgiveness, <coughs> hatred and love curse and covenant. Flesh is where God interacts with us and continues to offer himself through communion bread and daily life. Through water we are cleansed of sin and the lasting effects of evil are wiped out through the death and resurrection of Christ in the flesh. New life the triumphs over sin and death is lived in the flesh, where our experience shapes us. That's what brings so much meaning to a person who offers to share their life stories during Sunday school or as they direct choir practice. Our flesh is where we know, where we come to know what it means to be valued in love and goodness. See, God did not save Noah's family and the rest of Earth's biological gene pool just to ensure survival of each species. 
God's mission was to begin life anew and recreate. And we often forget that we're partners in that ongoing process. So I want you to choose a symbol to remind you of God's unbreakable covenant with you, the earth and all flesh. Perhaps it's a living person or a creature in your home or yard. Perhaps it's the home itself or the land itself. Maybe it's a thing or a photo that reminds you of God's provision in the past. That's really the purpose of this plaque. Maybe all you need as a reminder is the fact that you're alive and you're able to do what you can. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for water and word, for cleansing and covenant. Help us know you more intimately as we live in the flesh. Continue, continue to redeem and renew our relationship to you and every other creature. Give us your global perspective, your ability to love without wavering for the sake of your goodness. Strengthen our patience and good conscience. Help us recognize your appeal to let our name represent and please you. We are the children of your flesh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 64. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, right for right, true God from true God, begotten from not made, the one being of the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon us pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, of the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son and his worship and glory. He has selected the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic Mass. 
Before I, we, we exchange the peace, I invite you to get out your phone because I'm trying to challenge you to text the word peace to one person on your list. I'm going to get my phone out. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now don't forget to wish each other Peace be with you. And then text somebody. Peace. You would recite the offertory verse. Let's see, one for Lent. And it is found on page 67. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem.
In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness, especially Bill Campbell, David Schofstall, Larry Daniels, and Joanne Groft. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and bring you peace.
I hope it's not going to be as cold as today. Thank you for coming. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.